Have you ever been standing at your network printer and wanted to scan a document and directly email it to somebody? Well, I'm Ronnie Wong and I want to show you what the pros know. All right, so this just happened to me the other day. Now, a long time ago, I had actually set up what we call an SMTP relay, but then something ended up happening that as the company switched machines, I said, hey, can you set up that SMTP relay again? Well, it had been a while, but it was actually pretty neat when I actually got it set up, and I wanted to show you what the pros know. So here it is. You have a network printer that actually has copying, scanning features, has everything that you want it to do, and it also has that ability perhaps to email out to someone. Well, when you start actually thinking about that, you might think, well, do I have to actually set up an email account for them? Do I actually have to do a lot of different things? But you don't have to do any of that, especially if you're perhaps are on a Windows Server network. So the great thing is, if you're running something like, well, Windows Server 2012, going all up to Server 2019, which is the edition that I'm on, it has a built-in feature that you can take advantage of to set this up and it doesn't require an extra email account and doesn't require anything except for this server to be working. So let's go ahead and dive in and show you how to do that. We're gonna take advantage of the server manager to install a feature. So I'm gonna select right up here at the top, add roles and features. And it is from here that we're gonna click next here and we're gonna go with the role or feature base cause it is a feature that you see. Then we're gonna click next from there, you see I just left the generic name of my machine as we're doing this as a demo. Click Next, and we're not installing a role. We're gonna go Next one more time, and then I'm gonna scroll down, and you can actually see it right here where it says SMTP Server. Now, it's gonna say, hey, do you wanna make sure that this ends up working for you? These are all the additional things I need to install. So we're gonna add the feature, and click Next, and of course, once again, it's gonna actually go ahead and say anything else you wanna install, we're gonna leave it at the defaults and then simply install. Now, it doesn't require a restart, but you can actually choose that option if you think it might, but it doesn't require it. So this is the point where it's going to install the services that we need. Now you might think, well, that's just about all that I need to do then, right? That's all that we need, but it's not. There's a few configurations that's gonna make this thing complete. And I want to make sure I tell you that because if you set it up incorrectly, it can actually kind of be uh, problematic. And what I mean by problematic is other people can take advantage of it because it is establishing essentially, you know, if you think about it, an anonymous way that you can send emails. And that's not something you want everything to actually be able to do. So when we get this configured, we're going to go ahead and get in there and show you the configuration steps. And then we're also going to show you how you can test it and verify that the SMTP server is actually ready to go. This will then relay information up to one active SMTP relay agent, even out on the internet, and allow us to actually accept email that actually comes from this server as we choose to. All right, so we are now ready to proceed as I said. So I'm gonna close out of this and just verify inside of the server manager that the feature has now been installed. Now I can see that it actually does show me the internet information services but this is not where you go in to configure it. So don't be fooled by this. A lot of us actually have been. So even with server 2019, they've included in an older edition of it. So I'm gonna click on start. We're gonna to go to administrative tools. And what you're looking for is right there, the Internet Information Services 6.0 Manager. So you gotta have that uh, particular feature up and ready to go. I'm going to close out of our server manager to make it a little bit uh, easier for us to focus in. And let me zoom in. So in the Internet Information Services, we're going to expand out the server. And there is the SMTP virtual server that we want from right there. I'm going to right click, go to Properties. And this is where we will have to affect a few different places uh, too. Now on this first one, you can leave it unassigned if you choose to, or you can actually accept, accept the IP address that's actually there, which is gonna be from that machine. So I'm gonna leave it unassigned at this point because we're just testing it out. I'm gonna select access, and in terms of access, under the authentication, we're gonna leave this as anonymous access. Then what we want to do is select connection control, and that's important that you actually select this. Connection control, you're gonna say, hey, where do I want to actually ensure 
that only these connections are going to work. Which computers may access this server? So I can choose allow only the list below. And since we're just testing that, we're not connecting, let's say, a, that network copier or network printer, I'm just going to do a local host configuration so that we can limit that. We want to limit it to as small of a pool as possible. If it were me and I had that uh, particular printer or a copier multifunction device, I would might only limit it to those IP addresses with those devices as well. Click OK here. Then the relay restrictions. So under the relay restrictions, once again, which computers may relay through this particular server? So we would add in like what we said here. Oops, I'm doing the wrong thing. 2700. And we're just going to limit it to that. Verify that it actually says granted. So we've just really eliminate or actually added in connection controls and relay just to this machine, even as I'm testing it out. Underneath the messages, we're going to leave it at the default. You can actually send a copy of non delivery reports if you want to. I'm not going to do that. Under delivery, this is where we're going to select the advanced option. Under the advanced, you must be able to select the DNS that you actually need to. Okay, so that means that an SMTP server that you might use out on the uh, out on the internet that is going to e uh, relay your email messages or maybe one internal to your domain. Okay, now when we do this, we want to make sure we type that in. So I'm going to type in mine, and it's going to be here. Then from this point, I'm going to check and validate that it is a valid domain name. You can enter in additional information, but that is enough for what we want to do. We're going to click OK here and click Apply and click OK. And there's one last thing that we need to do, and then we can test this out. So if I want this to be on, to actually be ready to go, this process is normally done manually. So I need to go into the services and ensure that this service starts up automatically. So I simply am looking for the services, MSC. Then I'm going to scroll down to the simple mail transfer protocol. And you can see that it's currently running because it's manual. But I'm going to change that option and tell it to do an automatic here. Stop it, and then I'm going to start it again. So just to make sure it actually is going to do what I want it to do, and click OK. That way, even if the server restarts, this service will start as well. So now that I've got everything that I think that I need here, how do I verify that this is going to work? The way that we can verify this is we're going to create a document. Now, I've already created the headers of the document that we need inside of my Documents folder to essentially show you what has to go on here, okay? So with this, notice it actually is gonna send me an email. I can choose whatever name that I want to, and that's why it makes it dangerous for us. So that's why I wanna limit it to the way that we want to. Include in a subject, and then here a body, and we'll say, hello, this is the body of the test email and I'm going to do this too. Hello, Courtney. Okay, hi Courtney. Okay, now Courtney is our director right now. So I'm going to save that. Now with that file and where it's located, I move that to my desktop just so that we can do a test and show you. So how do I know what goes on and whether it's going to deliver it? If I go ahead and navigate to this PC, local disk C, inside of INET pub, and where it says mail root, notice this one here that says pickup. I'm going to click and drag that in there. It doesn't look like it actually did anything. But what actually ended up happening is that it's monitoring for that folder and anything that gets there 
it's going to get picked up and essentially sent out to the email address that we actually sent it. Now, does that actually validate anything? Well, in May, it actually looks like it did work, but here's what we can do. We can go over and then we can go ahead and check it out. And there it is. Test SMTP relay. And you can see right there, look, it actually does say hi Courtney in it. So it's just exactly like the one that I actually picked in. So if I expand that out, there it is. There's the body of the email. Now, the only thing that's left for you is to go over to your multifunction device. And regardless of what particular brand or model it is, all you have to do is find that feature for the SMTP relay. And you set it there. You tell it that its target is going to be this particular server that you have it on. Check out our playlist to see more What the Pros Know videos and be sure to subscribe to the IT Pro TV channel. I'm Ronnie Wong and now you know what the pros know.